<clears throat> so I announced a few days ago that I quit Mayo Clinic. I announced it on Ben Pekulski's podcast. And uh, he has a large audience, like 1.8 million Facebook followers, for example, things like that. Created quite a stir, so I thought I'd do a video on why I quit Mayo Clinic and just explain it in more detail. First, my background is I have a PhD in biochemistry from Boston University Medical School. I lived in Boston for 10 years uh, and I moved to Minnesota to work at the Mayo Clinic with my five kids and my wife. And now I'm quitting, which is a large risk, but you know, I think it's important. And again, I'm going to outline why here. I'll try and make it maybe five points. And the first point is that I have a consulting company, AJ Consulting Company, and it's very successful. I'm extremely busy. My calendar is jam packed. Sometimes I have more than a month long wait list for that. And I want to focus on that. I'm, I'm helping people optimize their health. And I love doing that. I just got off the phone with somebody who had long COVID. They had had COVID and then they also got the COVID vaccine. And then they, now they have so much inflammation. Basically they filled up their bucket of inflammation that where it's overflowing and they just cannot get out of that situation. And of course we looked at their genetics and you know, I do this every day. It's very interesting. I have usually about three DNA consults per day. And so I don't have time to do research and a whole bunch of DNA consults. And if I have to choose, obviously I'm more interested in helping people optimize their health. So that's the reason number one. I work with major league baseball players, NFL players, MMA fighters, uh, the special forces. I've given a couple of talks for them. I do DNA consulting for their operators. And, and of course it's all very confidential. We use aliases and all this, but the point is, I'm doing a lot of this and less and less research. Now, speaking of research, point number two, the reason I quit Mayo Clinic is because I'm a scientist at heart and I like doing research. The problem is when you become a professional scientist, you become a professional grant writer. So like in college, you're doing research, you're doing experiments. When you do a PhD or even a master's, you're doing experiments, you're getting your hands dirty, you're in the lab, you're growing cells, you're looking at a microscope. The further along in that career path you, you go, it morphs. It turns into a grant writing career. And basically grant writing is begging for money from government committees. And unfortunately your name is on those grants. Like it's very political. It's not anonymous. You have to have political connections. You have to develop political connections. You have to go to these conferences all around the country. And nobody really cares about your data, but you have to make these posters and present your data all the time. And it's very, very minuscule and very meaningless feeling to me. A lot of it's just, you know, resume building and stuff. And again, politics. So for that reason, I'm not that interested in doing scientific research as it goes in that direction, because you know, talk to a professional scientist. They'll tell you the, if they've been a, a scientist for 10 plus years or whatever, they're just writing grants all day. They've never picked up a pipette in the last 10 years. They don't physically get into the lab and do anything. So they're just writing grants, begging for money. The reason for that, by the way, is institutions are very incentivized to hire people to write grants. Because if I bring a grant to Mayo Clinic, if I get a million dollar grant, Mayo Clinic gets a million dollars they get a huge amount of money. And then they, of course, they would give me a tiny salary from that. So these institutions benefit a lot from grant writing. So they pressure scientists a lot to do more grant writing and it just becomes money begging in politics. So that's reason number two. Reason number three is I don't believe in the conventional medical system anymore. And I really consider it a health, I don't consider, I don't consider it a health care system. I consider it a sick care system. You wait until you're sick, you go to the, the, the doctor, the hospital. This isn't Mayo Clinic specifically, this is just hospitals in general. It's a sick care system. And I don't want to be a part of that. It's not a sustainable system because the financial incentive is backwards. It's basically an incentive 
to, to wait until people are sick to help them. You're not actually trying to make people healthy because, I mean, ask yourself this. If you're a hospital, do you make money when people are healthy or do you make money when people are sick? What's the incentive? Sure, there's great people within these institutions that are honestly trying to make people healthy, but the incentive is backward. The incentive is actually to promote pharmaceutical drugs and a dependence on those drugs and not actually be healthy, but just to stack up pharmaceutical drugs and more and more interventions and more and more technologies and more and more injections. And I'm not a big fan of that as a whole. And I'd rather be on the other side of that, on the other side of history on this one, because I want people to optimize their health and to stay healthy and to basically keep their diet and their lifestyle in line with their genetics and in line with what their ancestors were doing for thousands of years, which is not a Prozac deficiency. It's not a Zoloft deficiency. It's not a Lexapro deficiency. So that's the third reason. It's a conventional system over at Mayo Clinic. And I'm not interested in the conventional system. Um, it's clearly not working. Americans are just becoming more and more unhealthy, especially in terms of obesity and things like that. And I don't want to be a part of that, unfortunately. I want to be a part of the actual solution, the real solution. So that's number three. It's a conventional system. I'm not interested in that. Uh, reason number four is because I feel like most large institutions in America, Mayo Clinic included, are very big brother. They have to worry about their public image, especially in cancel culture today. They're more worried than ever. And worrying about your image, what that means is you have to be very aligned with politics and kind of what the culture is telling you to say or not to say, whether that's in, in, in terms of gender, whether that's in terms of biology, whatever it is, you know, these large institutions feel pressured to basically be very bland and very politically safe and politically savvy and politically connected and very big brother and really watching everybody to make sure they don't say anything on Twitter. In fact, for example, I got called into HR because <laughs> there was three people in suits sitting there and I had made a Twitter post. This was back when I had Twitter. I'd made a post about, uh, well, I just took a picture there. Mayo Clinic had a, a big poster and it, it had Mayo Clinic's name on it. And then it said, eat more grains or something like that. Eat more healthy grains or something like that was the title. And I literally just took a picture of it and said, this is not scientific or something along those lines. I might've said it was moronic, but whatever I said, I basically said, this is moronic, it's stupid, it's not scientific because that's what I think. And they called me into HR and said, you need to take that Twitter post down. Now, that's the kind of big institutional, big brother, uh, pressure that I don't like because I like to say what I think. And I like that discussion where if I have bad ideas, I want to be told I have bad ideas and let's talk about the ideas. Let's not just have censorship. If I have good ideas, let's further those good ideas and let's like go more in depth on it. Maybe I don't like that idea, the mentality that we have to all be neutered in what we say. And we have to basically be very bland in our thinking and in our speech and in our public images. Uh, so that's reason number four. Big brother is not for me, uh, especially in our culture today and especially with all the shenanigans with the jab. Um, and by the way, you know it's political. When, when, when even a clinic or a hospital or a medical center is not acknowledging natural immunity, you know it's political. Natural immunity is way better than the jab. It's way better. Because if you're looking at an mRNA vaccine, just to go off track a little bit, you're looking at one spike protein. You're looking at antibodies against one letter S. But if you actually get the full virus, if you get COVID, to say the unfortunate C word here, and get censored, speaking censored, but if you get the COVID, there's a whole alphabet of proteins on there. There's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. You get a whole host of antibodies. You have a natural immunity. It's very thorough. You get the, the vaccine, you have one spike protein antibody. It's very limited. So, of course, if there's mutations and variants and all this, now the vaccine doesn't work. Um, so to not acknowledge natural immunity is not scientific. It doesn't even make sense. 
But you have these medical institutions not even acknowledging natural immunity, and they're promoting children getting vaccinated, which is crazy. So things like that are coming from these big institutions, and I totally disagree with them. I don't approve of that kind of thinking at all. And it all kind of ties in with the conventional system and the sick care system, which is influenced by money behind the scenes, which is influencing the politicians. So there's this whole like tumultuous problem with this whole system. And again, I don't want to be a part of it. I don't want to be on the wrong side of history here. And really the fifth reason I'm quitting Mayo Clinic is because they have soda fountains. It's that simple. If you go to the cafeteria, soda fountains. If you go down the hallways, vending machines, soda fountains. What's one thing that pretty much every scientist agrees on? Soda is bad. <laughs> like Americans have much too high blood sugar, much too high obesity, much too high diabetes. It's rising, it's rising, it's rising, even in children. They're basically selling cigarettes there and they're pretending like they're optimizing people's health. If they're selling soda, are they selling soda? Yes, absolutely, it's all over the place. So those are my main top five reasons. I'm just skimming the surface a little bit, but I wanted to give you some idea because again, uh, you know, I, I announced it on a very large podcast and I just wanted to explain it for you. Uh, you know, optimize your health. Stay on the, on the road to optimizing and self-knowledge and, and basically, you know, take, taking care of yourself. Don't expect somebody else to do it. Look at AJ Consulting Company. Look at, you know, optimizing your health based on your DNA. And, you know, I appreciate that. I have a Patreon page also. I'm not that concerned. Um, but everything helps. Everything helps because I'm trying to have freedom to say what I want to say to you and put out more videos, put out more podcasts, put out more books, um, and just general truth seeking, which people need in our culture today. So that's really it. I hope that makes sense. You know, drop a comment. I'm going to do a lot more videos coming soon. I look forward to that. And I appreciate you watching.